Hi, welcome back to Shirai Show. I would like to continue the reading. This is part two of the Safe in the Shepherd's Arm. And before I continue, I'm going to read this poem. And then I will go on to the second verse, I shall not want. You are a great God. Your character is holy. Your truth is absolute. Your strength is unending. Your discipline is fair. Your provisions are abundance for our need. Your light is adequate for our path. Your grace is sufficient for our sin. You are never early and never late. You send your son in the fullness of time and will return at the consummation of time. Your plan is perfect. Bewildering, puzzling, troubling, but perfect. From He Reminds Us of You, a prayer from a friend. I shall not want. What you have in your shepherd is greater than what you don't have in life. David has found a pasture where discontent goes to die. It is as if he is saying, What I have and God is greater than what I don't have in life. You think you and I can learn to do the same? Think for just a moment about the things you own. And think about the house you have, the car you drive, the money you have saved. Think of, about the jury you inherited and the stocks you have traded. and the clothes you have purchased. Envision all your stuff and let me remind you two biblical truths. Your stuff isn't yours. Ask any coroner. Ask your embalmer. Ask your funeral home director. No one takes anything with him. When one of the wealthiest men in history, John D. Rockefeller, died, his accountant was asked, how much did John D. Lee? His accountant replied, all of it. Naked a man comes from his mother's womb, and as he comes, so he departs. He takes nothing from his labor that he carries in his hand. Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 15. All that stuff is not yours. And you know what else about all that stuff? It is not you. Who you are have nothing to do with the clothes you wear or the car you drive. Jesus says life is not defined by what you have, even if you have a lot. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Heaven does not know you as the fellow with the nice suit or the woman with the big house or the kid with the nice bike. Heaven knows your heart. The Lord does not look at the things man look at. Man look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. When God thinks of you, he may see your compassion, your devotion, your tenderness, your quick mind, but he doesn't think of your things. You have a God who hear you, the power of love behind you, the Holy Spirit within you, and all the heavens ahead of you. If you have a shepherd, you have grace for every sin, direction for every turn, a candle for every corner, and an anchor for every storm. You have everything you need. You and I could pray like the Puritan who sat down to the meal of bread and water. He bowed his head and he declared, All this and Jesus do. Can't we be equally content? Paul said that godliness with contentment is great gain. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 6. When we surrender to God the crumblesome sack of discontent, we don't just give up something, 
we gain something. God replaces with light weight, tailor made, sorry resistance, attach your gratitude. What will you gain from your contentment? You may gain your marriage. You may gain your precious hours with your children. You may gain your self-respect. You may gain your joy. You may gain the faith to say, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want traveling light. This is Shirai going on to part three.